capacity from Exxon. So what we'll be doing instead is we'll be using a public domain database and using its data to do some quick analysis and show you guys how, what are different methods or different ways you can sort of, uh, you know, analyze some data. Because I'm pretty sure you guys might have already studied what Hall's plot is, uh, what double derivative is, and how to make them in different applications. But how do you do that in Excel? And what it does is it helps you get understand, it helps you understand the entire process and even the equations better. All right. So before we go any further, here are some ground rules, right? So I want to make this a really, really informal session. And as I said earlier, I'm reiterating just to make most of out, out of the session, let's try to keep it as interactive as, as we can. And speak up even if you feel you might be wrong, right? Because all of us are here to learn. And again, it doesn't mean that I'll be always right. Even I can be wrong. And if you feel that I'm saying something wrong, please don't hesitate to interrupt me during the session. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to stop me and ask me that. And at, at last, Sometimes I tend to go fast if I think the topic is easy. So ask me to slow down if you feel I am going too fast. And if I'm going too slow to your liking, ask me to speed up as well. All right. Um, any questions until now? No, sir. All right. At least one people person is speaking up. That's good. Perfect. Uh, I see a chat. I'll quickly check that. Not yet. Uh, perfect. So next we have a simple quiz that we talked about. All right. Uh, so we have a Kahoot quiz. Um, I'll quickly drop the link in the chat box. So there are a couple of things that I want you to do before we go there. And that is, all right. It is almost loaded. Okay, perfect. So please go to kahoot.it and join via GamePen. And uh, I would ask you to put in your username like this, right? So an adjective and your favorite animal, for example. For example, I have put my username as a creative goat. So it can be anything that you that you like in that sense. Let's Let's just try to make it fun. Okay, game pin is, oh my bad. Uh, I'll have to do it again. Sorry about that, I accidentally pressed space. Okay, we have a new pin guys. And sorry uh, for the folks who almost got in. Oh, we have a mighty panda. Interesting. Any any competitive players today today in the lobby? Anyone who wants to win? Oh, Nan, come on. We wanted a name and a name with adjective and animal. No problem, though. We have two people. We have a dodgy panda. All right. Ha, huh, crazy nights, lazy sloth, radiant rhino. <laughs> I, I like this cover share. Nine participants keep on going perfect. Dark, Excel elephant, confused cow. Oh, that, that's a good one as well. Website's not opening, server is showing busy. Okay, uh, give it a give it a moment. I guess a lot of people are trying to log in. That is why it, it is getting stuck. Again, thank you for your patience. Insane cheaper. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a random question though. Are you guys able to hear the music or not? No. Oh, come on. No, sir. Why? 
Oh my God, that's too lot for me. Let me try and do one thing. Maybe I'll do that and I'll increase the volume from my end. Some of it might reach you guys. Excluded Buffalo, good human. Okay, interesting. Feisty Griffin. All right, let's give it two more minutes uh, to see how many people can come in. If the server is too busy, uh, maybe we can get started for now. Because we have a lot to cover. IIT and Bandar, okay, that, that's an interesting one. What's your Sherlock strongest animal? Okay, with a name like Sherlock, I hope you, I hope you are aiming for the win. Okay, for the folks who are having difficulty joining via your uh, PC, try your phone. Usually, that that works. Okay, I see forty six people. Uh, sorry, was anyone trying to say something? Okay, technical glitch from my end though. Laughing hyena. Hmm. All right, last 30 seconds guys. And then we'll get started. And apologizing in advance for the folks who are not able to make it in. Okay, I see three people dropped out four now. All right, last eight seconds. Four, three, two, and one. All right, so I hope you guys are looking at your screens because the questions will be in your screen. But after each question, if you, if you feel like it, you can switch over to my screen to see the leaderboard. All right. So I'll start in three, two, one, and go. All right, and let me know if you want me to read the question or would you like to read the question yourself? First one I'll let be. All right, the process of arranging an item of, of a column in some sequence or an order is known as All right, sorting. So a lot of people know this. That's really good. Okay, I see Panda on the top. That's that's really good. All right, next question. So this is a multi multi select. So if you guys know what outliers are, these are data points which are abnormally high or abnormally low. So what might be the best way of detecting an outlier? What do you guys think? Is that make a calculated column using formula, conditional formatting the data? Okay. So it was a multiple choice. I don't know how many people were able to get all of them, but let's see. Okay. Insane cheetah. 32, 32 steps higher. That's really good. But this one's a simple one. Which one is not a function in MS Excel? Um, and just in heads up, guys, faster the faster you click, more points you'll get. Oh, perfect. A lot of people. That's good. So we do have an average function, but it reads A, V, E, R, A, G. So the complete, uh, not the abbreviation. Perfect. Mr. Tiger, dark horse in the lead. That's good. 
All right, another multiple select. This one's going to be tricky. Oh, perfect. A lot of people put that in. But I guess I was the one who put in the wrong one. Okay, perfect. So Dark Horse is on the top. Mr. Tiger's now lagging. All right. So what, what type of chart would you use to see trends over time? A radar chart, column chart, line, or a pie chart? Okay, a lot of people uh, put in a line chart. So the issue with radar column and pie chart is uh, the, vis the visualizations inherently don't have a time component to it. Anything that you see there is either instantaneous or cumulative. All right, let's see. Okay, I see Mighty Panda has come up and so has IIT and Bandar. Okay, now this one's another easy one. Which function in Excel checks whether a condition is true or false? Oh God, that was a quick response. And for the folks who are not in uh, this particular quiz, we'll have a similar one at towards the end. So don't worry if you are missing out. All right, the leaderboard remains the same. There are no changes as of now. All right, now, if you want to know how many numeric entries are there in a column or multiple columns, what will you use? Check num, sum, count, or num. All right. Okay, so check num is not a function. A lot of uh, people get confused with that, but we use count and count has different iterations that we'll discuss later in the meeting or in the call. All right, a couple of people are coming up. That's good. Leaders too high up. All right, let's see. 50, you guys have 50, 50 chance to get this right. Okay, okay, almost 50 50 split. But yes, if you have duplicate entries, it will lead to skewed matrix. For example, if you're uh, taking an average, it might not affect it, affect it as much. But if you're doing some statistical analysis or uh, doing an analysis on the cumulative numbers, it will skew the metrics a lot. All right, okay. IIT Bandar has come on the top now. Dark Horse, you'll have to pick up pace. Four more questions to go. Again, this might be slightly tough, so don't worry about it. So. Oh, a lot of people were able to correct, uh, choose the correct answer. That's really good. All right, we'll dis uh, later on discuss how blank skills and why blank skills will be an issue. All right, I see All right. a lot of people coming up. That's good. The entire leaderboard has changed now. 
so type text shown in an active cell shown in an active cell is also shown in blank is it the ribbon is it the scroll bar title bar or the formula bar okay that's good that's good a lot of people know this is the formula bar perfect mighty point down the top now nice in case of duplicate matches we look up we'll give the first match is it true or is it false right last second and yeah it is actually true so there's another use of vlookup just because of this property uh, we can get first and last occurrences because of this in our in a table which contains duplicate and i'll tell you how, where that is used later on all right oh my god feisty griffin zealous lion have entered the leaderboard now all right so what do you do what is your what should be your first step after receiving the data do you analyze it do you make plots from it do you clean it or do you well you don't do any of the aforementioned items last second and yes we clean the data so analyzing part comes second but the first thing that we do is we need to clean the data all right now we have winners and once your name comes up can you let us know who you are all right starting from number 1 who is it uh i am sir that's the am perfect now feisty griffin come on sir it's me shubham patel sure nice that's good and number 3 sir it's me pranav all right congratulation to you guys so you guys know excel a lot more than you were letting on i guess <laughs> that's good congratulations and uh for the folks who have haven't had the chance to do it we'll have another quiz at the end and it would be easier than this one i promise so let's sort of carry on with this i'll close kahoot for now so that the music goes away perfect so for today's day uh, what we'll do is we'll focus solely on data cleanup and what we also usually say as a basic quality check or a qc in short all right so if i say qc in any of the slides going forward it means quality check so there are a lot of things that we usually have to do starting from parsing data from a uh, from a text it should be text my bad to a column checking for any missing data getting rid of white spaces selecting and removing all the blank cells handling duplicates uh, converting numbers stored as text into numbers and using find and replace to clean data so before i go forward i'll ask any one of you guys to sort of let us know if you have used any of these techniques before anyone and if you haven't you can just say no as well no all right i guess sorry please go ahead okay i guess not a lot of people have used it so all right next i'll ask you to uh open the attachments i hope everyone has re received the attachments as of yet uh has anyone tried to open the attachment if not uh, i think this might be the time to do it so just drag your attachment here open the sent mail all right i have it So if you open your attachment, it actually looks something like this. I hope, hopefully, you guys can see the same thing that I am. So it is a text file, 
and it has data for a well, right? Which has a lot of columns and a lot of stuff. So right now it doesn't make any sense. So what I'll quickly do now is, uh, can you give me a thumbs up? I'm, uh, I hope you guys know how to use it using Zoom to let me know if you have the data with you. All right, I see a lot of thumbs up. I only see a lot of thumbs up. Has anyone tried to open that in Excel? Okay, I guess not. So maybe that is the first thing that we try. So give me one quick second. So there's a text file, right? Okay, I see Ravi has opened it in Excel. Hey Ravi, uh, what do you see after you opened it in Excel? Or do you have a question? They all uh, data elements in the same column. Single, same yeah. column, right? Yeah. Perfect. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks for speaking up. Um, uh, anyone wants to take a stab at what we need to do next? Before, uh, before we go any further. If not, what I'll uh, tell you is, so sometimes what happens is if you, uh, there is a lot of text here, but I'm, I'm not going to read through all of it. Uh, this, you can use that, this particular stuff later for your reference. But sometimes what happens is if we download data from our database, uh, usually uh, sometimes people, what they do is they import it to a text file or a CSV file. And uh, when, when that happens, what happens is all the data is crunched into a single column when we put it back in Excel. And it won't make any sense, right? You won't be able to do any operations or any kind of analytics if your data looks like this. You need to know what data uh, refers to which particular header from these particular stuff, right? For example, uh, online hours could be anything. Well, head uh, temperature could be anything, but now we don't know because everything is put in a single column. So what we do next is we parse the data or separate it into multiple columns, right? So follow along with me. And if you have any questions again, stop me. So first of all, select the entire column, go to data and go to text to columns. Can anyone give me a quick shout out when you guys are here? Yes. All right. I have heard one yes. So I'm assuming other people are also following. So there are two options here, right? So if you know that your text here is, uh, is separated by characters such as commas and tabs and other things. So you can put in a full stop, you can put in a, a hyphen, exclamation mark, whatever you feel. But if you know that that is the case, then you can use delimited. But if you know that there are fixed number of white spaces between each of the column, use the one in the bottom. So right now I can, uh, if I scroll through, I can quickly see that all of them are commas, right? All of, all of the things are separated by a comma. So I'll select delimited. The next thing that I'll click on is comma. So by default, nothing would be selected. So select comma. And this, uh, this will show you a quick preview of how your data will be split apart. All right. So if you do next now, now what you can do here is you can select each of the columns and give it a particular data type. So right now I'm leaving it as general and I'll click on finish. This is how it looks at the end. So if I expand it, so I have my date on the first hours online on the second. Valid temperature, pressure, downward temperature, downward pressure, platform choke, oil, gas, and produced water. Anyone has any questions until now? Excuse me, sir. Sure, sure, Ravi. Go ahead. So, yeah, please repeat uh, what to do in the second step. Second step? Sir, after, right. sir. after delimited? Yes, sir. 
Okay, so you click on comma because you have seen, right? Uh, you'll have to make sure, for example, if you had semicolon instead of comma, you would select semicolon, right? Uh, so depending on whatever you use as a uh, whatever was used as a separator, click on that and then quickly see a preview by going down here. And then you can see, okay, it is splitting apart in columns, right? And then press next. Yes, thank you. All right, perfect. Yes, sir. Okay, I hope everyone is following and I hope everyone has data in different columns now. So this was really simple and this is what we do uh, uh, when we do, sorry, text to column, please go ahead. Sure. Yep. Sure, sir, one minute. Uh, uh, sir, uh, sir, could you please ask me how to open this text file in a Excel format? I can't. Oh, tell. okay. So there are multiple ways you can do it. Yeah, thanks for asking that. Actually, I should have started with that. It, it's my bad. So either you can do an open click uh, open with, but sometimes it doesn't show. So what I usually do is I open Excel, right? Uh, where is it? Open the Excel. And this works for a lot of, uh, well, almost every application, as long as are you, you are in uh, Windows, right? Just open an Excel and drag and drop the file you want. Does that, does that help? Uh, hey, funny. Uh, did it solve the issue for you? One minute, sir. I'm doing it. Sure, sure. Okay, okay. Anyone else had similar questions? Sorry, uh, really, my bad. I should have started with that. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. I'm done. It's done. Okay, perfect. Um, sorry, someone else was trying to speak. Sorry, we so cut you off. You, like, what did you press so that every uh, like every column got distinguished? Like, okay. So again, if you go here, text to column. So you need to go to data here on the ribbon. All right. Text to columns, delimited, comma. Then you have to go next and finish. Sir, I was asking about after it got distinguished. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Uh, so that is auto fit in a sense. So uh, select all the columns. My bad. I didn't understand the question. It's totally my bad. And then double click on it. Okay, sir. so double click on where? Double click here, right here. Okay, sir. Uh, when when the cursor changes, right? For uh for resizing it, this resizes it. Just double click on that, so it automatically resizes. Uh, Ranjit, you should have it on your mail. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, sorry. Please sir, go what ahead. step? What is the step on the process of uh, delimited, sir? After that. Okay, after delimited. Uh. My bad. Okay, after delimited. And uh, in the meantime, Satyam, can you please take a look at uh, Rajneet? For some reason, he doesn't have the file. Right. So click on comma, uh, Avinash. So you see here that yeah. all the all the different things are separated by a comma, right? So, so is there a, any need to select the columns? No, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. Just select the first column where your data is. And that is it. And if you want, you can change the destination from here. But I usually, uh, how should I say, overwrite on top of it. All right, does that help? Yes. Sir. Okay, perfect. Sir, delimited of the comma, no, sir. Delimited, delimited, comma, yes. And then just press next and finish. Once you have it, uh, give me a, or give me a shout or let me know so that we can move to the next step now. I haven't received any mails today. Okay. Uh, so Ranjit, I haven't sent the mail. So Satyam and Raj has uh, taken care of so, that. So uh, if, if anyone has not received the file, so you can drop your mail in the chat box. Uh, I'll be sending you. Yeah. And uh, let me quickly try one thing as well. Uh, we can share documents here, right? Currently in use. Okay. Uh, what do I do now? Yeah. Oh yeah, that works. And I, I'm also dropping the file here straight away. Perfect. Thanks, Satyam. Thanks, Raj, for handling that. Uh, I see, Abhishek, you have raised your hand. You have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, 
No, sir, it was by mistake. Okay, no worries. All right, for the folks who are lagging slightly behind, uh, let me know uh, if you want me to repeat the steps again. If not, we can carry on. And if you are stuck in the step again, let us know and we can revisit it quickly. All right. So for the uh, folks, sorry, sorry, please go ahead. You don't get it. Uh, you don't get. Uh, yeah. uh, I'll stop sharing. Can you st uh, start share? Uh, Satyam, can they share their screens for for the time being so that we can quickly go through what they can do? Sorry, sir. I actually, I'm using it through mobile phone. And, uh, oh, oh, okay. You, you are on your phone, so it might be slightly hard. So for everyone, uh, if they're facing any issue, so the recording will be available on the YouTube. So uh, in future, if they want to revisit it and see the process, how it was done, so they can uh, do it. Okay, perfect. Yep. And uh, feel free again to sort of reach out to me as well um, if you have any questions in the future. So next thing that I want the folks to do who have their data separately, right, as it looks for me is uh, quickly scroll down the data and uh, take a look at uh, what you have. Do you see any anomalies that you might want to flag? Anyone, no one has seen any errors or anything. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That is that is what I was referring to. Thank you for that. So if you are uh, if you have missing rows, uh, what do you think this will uh, how do you think this can affect uh, your sort of analysis? So first of all, I'll ask you, uh, do you guys know how to take cumulatives? And when I say cumulative is uh, running total, for example, starting from this particular day on, I'll add all the oil numbers. Anyone wants to volunteer to uh, show others how it is done? Or take a wild guess? All right. If not, uh, let me show you how you can do it quickly, right? So the first number would be this, but if, if you're taking a running cumulative, we'll have to add it, add the current number to the previous day's number, right? So this is how you take a running cumulative. And I'll show you how the blank cells can cause an issue, right? So I double clicked on it. Hopefully you guys know this is the, this is the way you autofill the formula. And if you see here, my autofill stopped here. And why did it stop here? Because there were blank rows. So what it thinks uh, essentially is that all of your blank, uh, all of the rows here, uh, all the rows that you have above it in all the columns is sort of the complete data set. And from here, your next set of data starts. So sometimes what happens is people uh, end, up do uh, end up doing this and they don't check if the formula has been carried over to the end of the data. And as a result, they end up having wrong, wrong numbers. Right, because this is only cumulative towards two twenty two thousand seven, and if you if I were to take a look at the last number, it's twenty twenty, right? So this is how you uh, have a have a look at where your data is missing. All right, so uh, does anyone know how you can quickly check uh, if there are any blank cells or not? Okay, I'll take that as a no. So if I go here, if I go in home, right? And if I say, click on sort and filter, it applies a filter on everything here. And if I go here and scroll to the end, so this one has a lot of data, maybe this one has less. Again, this one is still not working because we have it differently. Let's do it in a different manner then. Let's just select it till the end. And now if I go here, uh, this one actually has a lot of data. And if you see, I'll deselect everything else and I'll select blanks. So these are all, all of my blank entries. So these are all the places uh, where 
I have, uh, I don't have any data, right? And this means that how many, how, however many 17 uh, dates are missing from this entire period. And for those 17 days, we don't know how much oil, gas or water we produced, right? So this sort of analysis you need to do first, relatively quickly, just to make sure that you're not missing any data. Because for example, think of it this way, right? If you're trying to do a say material balance at the end, you are missing some data and you will uh, end up un under predicting your current recovery levels. And as a result, maybe you drill, a, drill another well in the field, which will not produce as much because we have, you've already produced that amount out. So this is how you can do it. Another way is, I'm not really sure if you know the shortcut or not. If you press control and if you press any arrow keys, it will take you to the end of uh, the data for that particular column until it hits a, a blank row. So for example, if, I, if I'm here and if I press control and down, it will take me to the last row where it has not encountered a blank row or column. Uh, so what about the data we missed? Okay, uh, Ayushi, can you sort of, okay, can you, if possible, can you unmute and ask me a question? Uh, ask me the question as in, uh, when you when you met, meant when analysis, what do you mean? I request Gautam to please. Uh... Yeah, I think he's stuck. Uh, maybe the host can help. Yeah, thank you. All right, so I'm not really sure Ayushi what you exactly meant, but maybe I'll uh, try to answer the question from my understanding is it will affect all of your analysis. For example, uh, if you were doing uh, pressure transit analysis for the well, right? Uh, if you have some uh, missing data points, say you have missing pressure points in between, what will happen in that case is you will not be able to see the uh, the pressure response in the reservoir and concurrently the derivatives, the pressure derivative plots that will be made will not show you uh, a lot of um, a lot of features that you wanted to see. For example, your pressure derivative plots look something like this, right? So if if you go here, so this is your early time region. This is your uh, this is when you have your radial flow and this is when you hit your boundary. So maybe if you are uh, if you had some data points which were missing in say early time region starting uh, 10 to 100 minutes or uh, something for example, you will not see a proper curve here. You will see points which are interpolated and you will not be seeing the data in the middle. And for example, if you had data missing here, you will see something like this, and you will completely miss your middle time region. And as a result, you will predict wrong skin or KH for a reservoir. So that is how it can affect your brand analysis. And this is true for all of the data, right? So if you're doing a decline curve analysis, not really sure if, you've, if you guys have studied that yet or not. But again, if you have missing data, it will affect your analysis. And at this point, what you need to do is first of all, talk to the data owner or go back to the data source and check if you have the data available. If it is available, then it's perfect. If it is not, the next thing that you need to quickly do is, uh, make a educated guess or a proper assumption to sort of fill in the data gaps. For example, you think, okay, we had a well which was producing this much and a well which later went down slightly, but it went back up. So maybe it was on the same level and then it went back down for a day and then it, it went back up. So this will not change your volumes a lot, but at least you will have some data for this day. And make sure whenever you're making assumptions like this, uh, make a documentation of that somewhere. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Ayushi. All right. Uh, anyone else has any, any more questions here? Uh, Ashtar, we have a uh, number of... Sorry, please go ahead. Continue. We have a number of rows. Uh, missing data is low. Mm -hmm. I mean, two or three rows are blank. So uh -huh. can we remove these rows from data set Yep, that, that is what I'm going to tell you to do next. But again, uh, as I said before, right, the best thing to do here would be to interpolate between these data, data points based on what you see on a trend on a trend analysis, right? For example, it, if it was going up between two points, maybe the point in the middle in the middle was somewhere in between. Does that make sense? 
Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry, funny. Go ahead. You had a question. Ah, uh, Astro sir. Actually, we get this data from uh, IoT sensors, right? Generally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, is there any possibility that uh, really we will miss the data? Like yep. IoT sensors may not be working for uh, two or three hours, like that. Yep. Technical error. Yes, we do have it actually. For example, think of it this way, right? Sometimes what you have is uh, you don't have a power backup on the gauge. And if there was a power failure on, on the well or on the pad, uh, your gauge will be down for that many hours or days. Hello? And depending, sorry, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I was saying, yes, it is totally possible to get data blackouts due to power failures at the gauges. And sometimes, not only that, sometimes what happens is, for example, some of the gauges are say connected via your, uh, wireless connections, right? Or some, some of them are wired. So sometimes what happens is maybe that connection broke. So even though the gauge was reading the data, it did not make it, it did not make its way to your database from where you're pulling from. So that is, uh, that is what happens in reality with the data. So a lot of times, uh, if you get a very clean data, a very, I should say continuous data, it's, it's actually very rare, I, I would say. You do see some discontinuities. For example, I have personally worked on a data set in which we had years worth of data which was missing. So we had to went, uh, go back to a different database to get that data. So that is how you usually tackle that uh, problem, uh, Fani. All right. Thanks for that question. And uh, if you if that doesn't answer your question, uh, please do follow up, follow that up with a follow up question. All right. Anyone else has any questions, or we can go next, uh, go to the next step and remove these blank cells. Um, hello, hey Rashmi, if you're trying to say something, we were not able to hear you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. But your uh, voice is slightly muted. So I don't know what happened to your microphone. Okay. Maybe ha have a look at it. All right. Now it was better. Perfect. So next thing that I will do is again, I'm not really sure if you guys have done this or not, but, uh, do this again. So if you remember what I told you, uh, control takes you to the last, uh, last set before it encountered a blank, right? So what I'll ask you guys to do is click on date and uh, press control shift, keep holding them and press the down button until you reach the last row uh, in our uh, data set. And once you have done that, press up arrow once. So you will select everything that you have in your current data set, all right? Can you please repeat? For sure. So click on date, right? Keep holding shift and uh, control and uh, keep holding again the down arrow. So shift, control, and down arrow until you reach the last row. And once you have reached the last row, just press the up arrow once. Got it. Perfect. So once you have done that, uh, go to find and select then go to special. I'll repeat, find and select in the home ribbon and go to special. And then you see a lot of options here, right? So you can do a lot, uh, a lot of things I'll not touch upon today, but for now our only objective is selecting the blanks. So select, click on blanks and then press okay. So you, you will see that only the blank rows are selected. Everything else is not selected. Right. And this, this has been done for the entire data set. So next, what I'll, I'm going to do is I'll click on delete and delete sheet rows. So all of the blank uh, rows have gone now. All right. Any questions up till now? Sir, could you repeat this again? Oh, sure. Let me see if I can get back the rows. All right. Uh, where do you want me to re repeat it from, Megma? From where you selected the blanks. Okay. So if you go here to find and select on the top right, go to special and then go to blanks. Press and then press OK. 
right? All of your blanks are selected and do that with the entire range selected, like I told you before. So control shift and down. And then next thing that you need to do is delete sheet rows. That's it. Thank you. Sir. No problem. All right. So now you, if you go ahead and for example, uh, do a control down here. Now you go to 2020, right? So you have all the data now. All right. So hopefully everyone is here. Uh, I'll take a quick one minute pause to see if anyone has any questions. If not, we'll go next. All right. Okay. Now I'll I'll need people to speak up now because if 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 you guys won't, then it won't be as fun. So <laughs> Uh, what do you have in first column, right? We have dates, but when you click on dates, is it considered a date? Because if I go here and I change it to date, it's not changing, right? What do you guys think uh, might be an issue? Uh, take a minute and try to sort of uh, see what is the issue with this particular date. Because one thing's for sure that this is not a number. And if, if the, if date was a number, we could say do a multiplicative issue side, but if you try to do it, it will give you an value error because it is not considered a number, but a string. All right. There is an unnecessary inverted comma at the beginning. Okay. And anything else that you have seen Abhishek? Thanks for that. Anything else that you might have seen? Slashes. Uh, no, no, slashes are there in the dates, but there is one one hidden thing, which is usually not visible. Just try to go through uh, the data sets, uh, the entire Three months. Uh, month is also okay. The okay, format, maybe. Maybe a format, yes, but Most format is maybe, still yeah. correct. Yes, yes. But there is a, what is this? There is a space here right there is a unused space which is causing this issue so again thanks for everyone who spoke up so this is this is one of the things that is causing an issue and, Ab and abhishek you were right the first issue that we have here is due to the inverted comma so first of all i'll let you sort of know what is the uh, fastest way to see if this is a text so there is a formula which literally says is text you can select that and then click so if it says true then that is a text, right? But if, if I were to put say today's date, so 11, 1, 20, 21, is this a date? Is this a text? It's text. So this is not a text, right? So this uh, tells you guys that our texts are not, uh, your dates are not a text. Instead, they are numbers. So if I go here and click a number, a number will come up, right? And if I were say to add a decimal here, you will see something interesting. If I go back to short date and say, uh, go here, it will add the hours. So your decimals are uh, a single number here. So if I go back to number here, so 501, right? Every increment that you do, on the first place is a day and every increment that you do after that is an hour. All right. So first of all, we need to fix that. So uh, there are a couple of things that we have seen again, uh, there are, there is an unnecessary comma here and we also have the white space. So first let's remove white space. So for removing that, what do you need to use is trim? So if you uh, see here, what it says, it says removes all white spaces from string, except for the single spaces between words, right? So any unused space will be removed. So if I click on this again, and if I say copy and paste as values, if I go here, there is no white space anymore. All right. So that that is what we are trying to do. And uh, next thing that we need to do is we also need to remove the uh, unused comma here. So this is going to be 
this is going to be hard, but let's see if we can do this. Uh, need write. All right, if you guys have any questions, let me know right now, because this is not working. Okay, maybe we won't trim it first. 11. Oh, my bad. Totally my bad. So this is what happens if you don't pay attention while writing formulas. All right. So does anyone understand what I did here? So I very quickly took a write of this text. So anything, uh, I'll take everything from starting from the right. So all the length minus one. So starting from the right is starting from here and length minus one. So everything except our uh, additional apostrophe would be taken here. All right. And now what we need to do is trim. Again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to jump in. And if you are following me, then that's great. Again, a quick 30 second pause to see if you guys have any questions. I've done this. All right, so I guess no questions for now. So I'm going slightly off script here. So uh, now that we have cleaned this, everyone has this, right? Everyone was able to do this. Uh, if not, I'll also dra drop this in chat. It's just to use this formula. This will give you the exact date. And next, what I'm going to do is copy this date and paste it right here because I'm going to use this column from now on. I'll remove this. Oh, this one's causing an issue. Okay, there you go. Hmm, I didn't remove it actually. Okay. Okay, let's do that. Uh, once you guys have done, are done doing that, let's use this formula, date value. Maybe I can put this in as well. All right, I don't hear anyone saying anything. So I guess you guys are already following me. Uh, because if you are, uh, we are going to move to the next step. And for the next step, we'll you'll need to have the dates in the proper format. If not, they'll not work. Right, I'll take that as a yes. Now, can anyone tell me uh, that we, 
now that we have removed the white spaces, we have corrected the dates. Now, if I were to sort of uh, try and see which dates are missing, how, how can I do that? Anyone has any idea that they want to try? Seriously, no ideas. Come on, guys. Uh, Astro, sir, funny. Here, actually, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting some value. Uh, paste this uh, date value. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if I paste this date value for me, I'm uh, getting some value. Okay, I'll just take that. Value okay, error. just just give me one second. Your voice is breaking. Uh, can you share your screen if you are on your laptop? Okay. All right. All right. Yep. I'll stop sharing. Saying post has disabled. Yep. Uh, Satim, can you give? Uh, try again, please. Yep. Can you try again? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Satyam or Raj, were you able to give him the access? Uh, actually, the access sir, is... I have given the access. Uh, try to rejoin. Hmm. Well, it should I'll happen rejoin without again. rejoining. Okay. All right. In the meantime, everyone else is here, uh, as in at the, at the step that we are at. Could you show it again, sir? Uh, which part? <laughs> I actually couldn't get the trimming part. The trimming part. Okay. Okay. All right. So maybe I can quickly uh, sort of explain with the formula itself, right? Uh, I'll go back here. So, so, so uh, I hope you understand why we need to trim, right? Yes. Uh, because it, it, it reads it as a text and we are not able to do any uh, calculations on it. And we want it as a number to do some calculations. So we need to trim it. So what I'm doing right now. So uh, first I've, I've, I'll paste this here again, copy this is here again. So what I'm doing first is just taking a right of everything, right? Or maybe we don't even need that. Let's start with trim. So trim will remove all your white spaces, correct? And we have removed our white, white spaces, but now we still know that there is the apostrophe which is remaining, right? Uh, so what we'll do now is just put in the formula for date value. So it it, it automatically detects if uh, if in the entire text phrase we have something that resembles a date value, and if it does resemble a date value, it will give us that. All right, and that is how you do it. But again, uh, maybe trimming. Maybe we'll have to do the maybe we'll have to do the left and right stuff. Okay. <laughs> My bad, I should have done that again. So the reason why we are doing the right and left is uh, again, we are uh, the right formula works in this way. We start taking characters from the right and uh, the number of characters you give, for example, let me just write four. And if I write four, it will just give me, uh, let me do everything else. What do you think it will give me? Uh, can, you, can you hazard a guess? From where you said it will take four characters. Yep. And we are getting 007 because we have a space which is counted as an extra character, right? So, uh, the and uh, there's another function which is len, right? Which gives me length of a text. So, I know to remove the first uh, apostrophe, I, I need to take everything except the first number. And that is why I've written exactly this, right? And then I know that white space still remains. And that is why I am putting in trim. And now our white space is removed. And now I know that this is still not in date format. So I am adding date value. So again, it, this is slightly complicated, I, I understand. But uh, I'm trying to break it down as easily as I can. So, yep, please go ahead. Can't we use find and replace? You can use find and replace. 
I actually I was going to touch on it at last but yeah that's a good that's a good point we'll, yeah we'll, we'll find apostrophe and then yes. we'll correct thanks for bringing it up ranjan so uh, the thing that he said right now ranjan said is use find and replace so what do we need to find we need to find this and what do we need to replace it with nothing right we need we uh, want to have it removed so we'll replace all and and straight away you have it here so for, oh for example i didn't select this one so you can you guys can try this as well um so select everything i'll do a control z again select everything here find what and replace all maybe this is easier yeah this is actually easier right all right funny i see you are in do you want to share your screen yes sir yep please I'm go ahead has it one minute oh yeah now can you see yep it is up one minute and see this is the formula up to trim i wrote mm -hmm. after trim i have uh, to write here date 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 value has it Date value, date value. Yep. and just uh, add a bracket at the end. Yeah. Yep. Press enter. Yeah, enter. Okay. Go go back on the first one. Okay. Uh, this is giving you an error. Oh, because you've already cleaned it, I guess. Because you've already cleaned it. Uh, all right. So can you do a control set multiple times just so, so just so that we can get to the original data set? Uh, yeah, I think now we can. I was told here. Yeah, perfect. Uh, go here. Here. Yep. And let's write the let's write date value in front of it before trim. Yeah. Perfect. Close the bracket. Enter. Yep. And you can drag it down now. Double double okay. double click on it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now it's done, right? And you can copy okay. paste it here. But Ranjan also sort of brought up a good point. I was going to touch on it last, but we can also do it by find and replace. Okay. So if you want to do it, uh, do a control Z. Uh, can I stop sharing? Yep, you can stop sharing if you want. I can okay. take Thank take you. it back. All right, perfect. So now anyone wants to, uh, well, we don't have a lot of time left. So I'll only ask once. Uh, do I, does anyone does anyone want to sort of take a quick guess on uh, how we can see which dates are missing? Okay, I'll take that as a no. But uh, now now that you guys at least know that these are numbers, what do you think this will give us if I subtract second date from the first date or preceding date? From the previous state, I should say next state from the previous state. So I'll change it. And by the way, uh, this is shown as a date because it's in general. If you put in number, it will show you what it is, right? So this this tells me that there is an increment of one here. All right. So I'm just trying to one for now, and I'll do this. So what do you think? What uh, we'll see if there are missing uh, data. Or missing dates here. Any guesses? More than one value will be exactly. And so if you filter, so put in. So there are ways to filter like this, right? Or you can also do greater than. So this is a number filter one. There you go. So this tells me that are that there are three dates missing before uh, this particular day. There are three dates missing. Eleven dates missing before this date. Uh, four before this 12 before this and so on right and then you can straight away uh, either write write in these references and go to them or again you can use these uh, references to sort of say for example uh, what i would do is uh, go here again so how you how do you select uh, the sh the rows are visible go to select special and visible cells only copy and i'll paste them here for the time being right and i also know here 
so you can do that or you can do that but sometimes what this does is it, it copies everything in between so that is why i usually go back and correct this so if i know that there are three days missing from it uh, missing before this then what i'll do is this right and now i know from when to when my data is missing uh actually this will be minus one preceding one this plus three so i now i now have date ranges on where this data was missing right and just to do a quick cross check if i subtract this this list should be exactly same as this list and now you can straight away go back to your database or whoever gave you the data and ask them okay my data is missing for 11 days but starting here to here can you please take a look at it in your database and give me the uh, relevant data right instead of uh, getting back to them and saying that data is missing now you can actually pinpoint where the where that data is missing all right does that make sense any any questions here all right i guess not so that is uh, in a sense all i had we already did uh, some of things which i uh, had here and i'm not touching on duplicate data for today uh, just because we are running out of time we just have six more minutes so uh, we'll sort of take this up in the next uh, next session and we'll uh, i'll also send these slides over so that you can use them for your reference later on all right so time for another kahoot quiz i guess if you guys are up for it again so and i promise you guys this will be simpler than the ones the, than the one we had before okay since a lot of people take a lot of time to generate their nicknames i'm going to put in a scroller so it will randomly generate some names for you but if possible can you guys quickly join in with this as the pin and while we are waiting for other players do you guys have any any other questions be it uh, on session today or be it any other uh, questions that you have chat the event seriously guys no questions I, either you guys understood everything that i sort of taught you or you did not understand anything <laughs> and i was a bad teacher for today i understand okay yeah because uh, progressively this is going to get harder and uh, well we we want to get to a point where uh, all of you guys can at least make things that we use in our day to day basis for example uh, for me i am taking a i take a look at say thousands of wells each day right and all of that has to be automated or i cannot go through all of them at once and i've also worked on data sets which are around 12 13 gigabytes in size and uh, visualizing the, visualizing them straight away is not easy so you have to apply a lot of different tips and tricks i guess just to get to see that data so hopefully we can get to that point all right so this is going to be simple by the way uh, simpler than the first quiz and the first quiz was hard on purpose um second one is slightly easier on purpose so since we are running out of time i'll wait for another say 20 25 seconds and then we can get started all right 10 more seconds i think we lost someone smart no thought leader satyam you are aiming for first again yes sir take it <laughs> <laughs> okay i guess a lot of people can beat you this time because there are some questions which are repeated by the way so 
if you guys remember what the answer was from the first one uh more power to you all right i see 40 people in so i'll get started all the best folks and i'll read the questions as, I, as i've been doing in the past all right what type of chart is useful for comparing values or categories again really simple i hope you guys remember right 38 39 couple last couple of questions two one and that is it perfect so a lot of people selected line chart but line chart is useful for comparing over time if you guys remember right for categories uh column chart is the one that we need to sort of use all right i see blue panthers on top okay perfect let's see let's hope you can keep this going okay you, sh you guys should answer this in a in a second yeah that's good that's more like it hopefully no one gets this wrong last four seconds guys sometimes if you answer in the last three seconds just a heads up it it doesn't count Okay, that's a surprisingly good number of people putting in right answers. That's good. All right, we still have black pa blue panther on the top. Space Fox is coming up from behind. All right, so double points. This is going to be slightly hard. <laughs> so we need to calculate weighted average. Again, I repeat weighted average, not averages. So your weights are in your column B from B2 to B4 and your scores are in column C, C2 to C4 and you have totals on B5 and C5 respectively. So for if anyone who doesn't know what a weighted average is, uh, what that means is maths would be, uh, the weighted average for maths would be 85 into 0.3 for English would be 0.4 into 76 French 0 0.3 into 81 and then there's some would be a weighted average all right 13 more seconds guys if you guys don't know just take a guess there's no wrong there's no penalty for wrong answers Right, 37, 38 entries, that's good. Okay, a lot of people have put in right, right, the right answer. And a lot of people have put in uh, the yellow one, but we can give that to them as well. Unfortunately, the scoring won't go that way. But okay, Lovely Owl has come from behind. So has Caring Chickle, Silver, Quail, and Brave Stork. Good for you guys. All right, come on, this, this should be easy now. Okay, a lot of quick quick fingers, I see. Seven thirty eight last four seconds, guys. All right, sorting, yes. Uh, for the for a lot of folks who put on filtering and arranging. So arranging uh, is not necessarily a keyword that we use in Excel. Filtering, yes, we filter and then we sort, or you can sort without filtering, but, but yes, you also sort of sort using filtering in a sense. All right, couple of changes in our scoreboard or leaderboard again. All right, again, repeated questions. The questions were repeated on purpose, by the way. Just wanted to see if people can remember what they learned from the first, first quiz and during our talk. 38 answers already. That's that's really good. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, perfect. You guys are really, really good at remembering stuff. Only one change in our leaderboard. 
lovely flinch has defeated the brave, brave stock, it seems. Let's see how many people remember this. Yeah, and by the way, be careful because uh, uh, the options change their places. So if you remember where, where it was, that won't work. You'll have to remember what the answer was. All right, last two seconds and last guess. Oh, perfect. Only one bad guess, but I guess that's acceptable. Good, guys. Next. Highest answer streak. Okay, you might pass our leaders then. Okay, this one also has a double point. So let's see how many people remember this one. So you have a condition which is in cell E2 and you want to write a formula which while taking into account what is in E2 can dynamically go to different rows when you drag it. So take a look at where your uh, dollar signs are before column or before row that determines which of the two would not move. So if you have it before two, which is row, your row won't change. If you have it before E, your column won't change. All right, three, two, one. A, okay, <laughs> nice. Thank you guys, a lot of people answered different one, but answer is A. But technically uh, 14th should also be correct uh, or green should also be correct. So it is my bad for not putting it in. All right, last couple of questions. A really, really simple one. Let's see what people think it is called. Is it a cell? Is it a column? Is it an address? Is it a value? The section of column and row. All right, it's a cell. So cells have addresses, but the intersection is called uh, a cell. All right. Two people moved up into the leaderboard. Okay, so if, if anyone paid attention, I haven't spoken about this proactively, but uh, if you have text, they align at a certain place in a cell versus a value or a numerical value. So we already five minutes up. All right, so it's left, it's not right. Right is for, so all of your numerical values will be on the right, all of your text will be on your left. So this is a really quick quick way of telling, okay, this is a text or this is a, um, this is a number, right? So if I go here, this is a number, but if I do a couple of control Zs, Oh my God, how many controls it's now? Yeah, this is now a text. So this is another quick way of telling uh, if your dates are wrong or stuff. All right. Okay, lovely flinch has taken the lead. What type of chart is useful for showing trends or changes over time? Now this one, you guys already know. <laughs> All right, thank you folks for that. We have last three or last four questions, so.
All right, which options allows you to copy self formats from one to another? Hmm. All right, it was for Matte Painter. So out of it doesn't do that. It helps us uh, sort of move stuff in a sense. All right, a really close battle, this one. How do you know if a range is active? All right, uh, data changes to bold and lets me know if it is active, it is highlighted on the screen. It has marquee on it, or I am just a psychic and I inst instinctively know. <laughs> Let's see if we have any psychics with us. Oh, we do have one psychic with us. All right, the right answer was it's highlighted on the screen. Okay, I guess we are on to the second last question. This one's also really simple. Mm -hmm. It's a formula bar. All right. Next question. And the last one for the day. How many numeric entries? We had a lot of wrong answers for this one. Hopefully we can get the correct one. One, zero. All right, it was count. And now for the winners, and as your name comes up, if you are seeing my screen, please unmute yourself and let us know who you are. All right, so we have um, um, Amazon Deer. Who was that? Me. It's me. So All Amazon right. Deer, Ajay Kumar. Oh, nice. Congratulations, Ajay. Who was Brave Stork? It's me, Raj. Raj. Oh, perfect. Congratulations. And who was Lovely Flinch, our champion for the day, I guess? It's me, Saurav Kumar Sharma. So, right. Perfect. Congratulations for everyone. And uh, thanks for sort of staying up slightly late beyond our time to attend the quiz, I guess. Hopefully you find it uh, well, easy to digest after we had a long technical talk. And uh, feel free to, since we have three more sessions after this, feel free to uh, give any feedback so that we can uh, tailor the next sessions from that, uh, in that way, uh, moving forward so that you guys can have more understanding. So any feedback, positive, negative, everything so is welcome. An announcement, uh, for the sure, participants. please go ahead. So, yeah, so, so the attendance link is in the uh, chat box. So the participants can fill it so that we can, uh, I issue the certificate at the end of the session. All right. If that is all, I think, yeah, that is all I had. If you guys have any other questions, yeah, feel free to reach out to me. If not, yep, I'll hand it over back to you, Raj. Uh, we can conclude the session now. Yeah, thank you, sir. So, Rasmi, you can uh, conclude the session. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for sparing the time. And we did learn a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try out more. After this session is over, I'll definitely go and try out more. And that was really interesting. So, I think we should conclude for today. Yep. Okay. Uh, good night, everyone. It was a great session having all of you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir.
थैंक यू सर